Hi crafters, this is Paulette and my little grandbaby needs some long sleeve onesies. I went to Walmart this morning just to see what I could find and there were some really cute long sleeve onesies that had printing all over them and they were just so adorable. They were also $3.25 a piece or they were $3.88 a piece. And I ended up settling on a three pack of Carter's zero to three months. And this was seven dollars and some change. I don't remember exactly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my own stamping. I have these, I have a ton of these. These are foam stamps. Uh, they're for fabric stamping, and these are some of the first stamps that I ever purchased. Walmart used to have a lot of them all the time. Uh, a lot of times you'll see them, they're like this, in this form. And I believe these are a plaid product. These may be too. They don't have any identifying things on them, but when Walmart decided to get rid of these... I bought a whole bunch of them for really inexpensive. I've just got tons of them, you guys. I've just got all kind of sets. And what they are is they're they're all sold in a a two a two layer thing, so they're a, a two stamp process. I think I've lost the one that goes with this because I do not think it's the flowers that go with that. But there's just a ton of them. I think those go with those. But anyway, just fun. Now, I've done kind of an odd thing. On some of these, I've gone in and I've painted Mod Podge on these and let them dry because I thought I wanted to do stamp with them with some of my dye-based inks. And because this is a sponge, they're, they're not porous, but they absorb the ink. And it takes a long time to rinse the ink out of them. Uh, they're best just to take them to the sink and hose them with the little hose sprayer. But anyway, this one has, has been sealed with some Mod Podge, a couple layers of Mod Podge. And I'm going to stamp in some non-traditional colors. And I just have these really old, look how, look how messy these bottles are. These are really old acrylic paint. And they're by the Plaid Company, too. I do have some that are by Apple Barrel. Well, that's Plaid, too. Apple Barrel brand. Well, who knew? Anyway, uh, I have some white. And these were so low that I have added white to them. Um, what was this? This was Wild Iris. And I've added white to that and just shook it up. And the same thing with this one. This one is Concord Grape. And I've added some white to it. And so I have this kind of lovely pink and this kind of purple. And what my goal is, is I have a whole bunch of little pants that I need something that will kind of go with them. I bought these little pants for a dollar a piece at Goodwill. And so I need something to make my onesies kind of match them. So I've got these two odd pair here. And I'm going to do a snowflake in these colors right here. Now, typically the best way to apply your paint to this is with a sponge brush. But I don't have any right now. So I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm just going to wing it. And I am usually that girl that's always doing what I need to be doing. And today I'm going to break the rules. Typically we wash, and I am just picking all this paint off of there. Because if you don't pick all that dried paint off of this little thing here, it's going to make the paint slop all around. So typically you would wash this first. But I'm going to wash it after, so I'm not going to wash it. 
And if you get me, if you get this paint on your clothes, trust me, it is not washing out. Have we all crafted with this paint in our good clothes before? Yes, I have. So I've just taken some cereal box and I've cut it down here roughly to the width of my onesie. And I even angled the top up here to mimic the shoulders. And I have just pushed that up in here and I have taped it to my countertop rolled it up and taped it down so this isn't going to move this is pretty good so I am ready to stamp and I'm going to stamp my big image first and which one was the pink I think this one ended up being the pink okay so I'm going to do the darker color first and because I don't have a sponge brush I'm just going to kind of smooth that out on my plate now there are some lumpy bits in here because this is old paint, so kind of smoosh those over to the side. When this paint, can you see that on my the tip of my finger right there? When this paint gets old, it kind of dries up inside there. So anyway, I'm going to grab a paper towel and we're going to get going on this. Now if you have the sponge brushes, you should use them. That works really, really good. So I am just going to, just like you would a regular stamp and not so neatly because these are on a near to nothing acrylic pad. So try not to get it in your fingers. And I'm just going to pounce around on the plate until I think I have some pretty good coverage right there. Oh no! Look what I've done. I've got a smudge already up there where I got my finger in the paint and didn't know it. So just like normal sponging, just work it around so that it sticks down into the fabric. Pull straight up and voila! So that's not too bad, but I do have a boo-boo here. So I need something like a pencil with an eraser on it. Oh, this one's not too great. Let me dig around in my drawer and see if I can find something a little better. If you have a new pencil that has an eraser on it that's never been used, that is the ultimate stamping tool. Okay, this one's not too bad. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad either. So, we're just going to make some snowflakes. See, that's a cool thing about being a crafter is that you can just fix the little boo-boos. And it's all okay. It's all good. Look how cute this is turning out. Pretty good. I'm going to end up going all the way down. You know I am. Because I'm that person that doesn't know when to stop. Don't go as fast as I am because right there's a little dot too. An extra little dot of paint because I'm going too fast. Alright, I think I'm going to stop right there. I think that's pretty good.
Now I will come back and iron these. I'll put a cloth. I have some old sheet that I will lay over the top of these and give them a good iron to heat set this paint before I wash this. Now I want to come back. I don't have any foam snowflakes. But you know what? I do have some dyes that are little snowflakes, but I don't know if they will cut the fun foam or not. Because you can make, if you do not have this type of stamp, you can make your own. This is an old mouse pad, and I just rough, rough drew and cut out with scissors a little Christmas tree, and I just glued it onto a scrap piece of wood and made a stamp. If you guys keep up with Tim Holtz, on one of the years of um, Christmas tags, he did um, make your own stamps out of some foam, and I just adhered two pieces together here and die cut those with a my little Sizzix. These these two here were Sizzix mover and shaper die, and this was the Sizzix small, the little green thick dies. I don't see my other piece, the, the piece that I actually made the stamp out of, but you can do that. You can glue it onto cardstock. You can glue it onto a piece of acrylic. Here is um, the Sizzix reindeer, and I've die cut him twice and glued him onto, gosh, this is about six or seven layers of like cereal box. This is actually dog food box. And just kept gluing it until I got enough that I could hold on to. And it really could be thicker because this was probably in the winter. Nope. It says August 2009. Well, it must have been a time that I didn't want to go out to the shed and dig around. So I just used cereal box and just kept gluing that together. So you can make your own stuff. And then I'm going to come in here with the pink and we will do this other image right on top of here. Probably just like that. So I'll wait till this dries a little bit and I'll come back and do that next step and my baby's fussing so I gotta go check on her too.